these fans are sensational here. Sensational. It is 3.20 in the morning, and now, with one out and an 0-2 count, the Mets send their pitching coach, Mel Stottlemyre, out. He might be running the team. I don't know who's running the team. Davey Johnson was tossed. He's running the team. Davey is from the tunnel, probably. And Stottlemyre, I, I guess, is telling Gorman... What to throw because the last time Harper had two strikes on him, he tied the game with a home run. And also, they know that the Braves are out of hitters and have Rick Camp on deck. So, you see, Carter, he wants the pitch away, whatever it is. John, there was another ball game, probably the longest as far as. Going into the morning hours, August 10th, 1977, the Expos at Philadelphia, second game of doubleheader. Philly six, Expos one. Game ended 3-23. Hernandez will scoop it and touch the bag two way. And in that game, there were four rain delays, just to give you an idea of what's happened here tonight. Here's Camp. Well, this is why you always save a player. That's this is absolutely the reason I thought the Braves did the right thing. They let Rungi take a shot at winning it and he hit the ball well. But now two outs and no one on the Mets are waving their infield their outfielders in. The whole Met team waving their outfielders in. Here's Rick Camp with a game on the line. Two outs and no one on base. And at least he took a good cut and fouled it off. Ernie, if he hits a home run to tie this game, <laughs> his game will be certified as absolutely the nuttiest in the history of baseball. Well, they could go to another pitcher, but in 18 innings, they've used just about everybody. No, the only three guys left are Bedrosian, Perez, and Zane Smith. There's a strike going to. So they researched that. They figured that Camp is the best hitter of the right. three left. It'll be an 0-2 pitch. And he is at the deep left. He goes back. It is gone. Holy cow. Oh, my goodness. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Rick Kim. Rick Kim. I don't believe it. Remember what I just said. If he hits a home run, that certifies this game the wackiest, wildest, most improbable game in history. <laughs> On an 0-2 pitch, Rick Camp hit it over the left center field wall. I don't believe it. If you only knew on the Braves, we kid Rick Camp about his hitting more than anything. Ernie. Nobody can believe it. Camp makes it 11-11, his first Major League homer. And here's Benedict. I mean, that is the most improbable act. Let's see it again, Ernie. We gotta look at this another 50 times. That goes heap, it's out of here. And it hit the football bleachers. I mean, if you told me that John Sterling's going to run for president and win, that wouldn't be any more improbable. And I've got to tell you, that's improbable. Unbelievable. Meanwhile, the count on Benedict is 3-0. and And if I was Tom, you know, when camp came up and we didn't show it, Gary Carter and the Mets infielders waved everybody in. Let's cut off the pop fly. Mark Goldsmith corrects me, our director. I'm sorry. I mean, I mean, it trot on your feet. I looked at the monitor. I didn't see it, but he said they did show it. Isn't that amazing? That's the most amazing thing that's ever happened in baseball. That's mind-boggling. The count on Benedict, three and two. <laughs> Obviously, the first homer of his major league career. Is that unbelievable? I'll tell you. <laughs> tell you, the odds on that have to be a million to one. 10 million to one. What do I know? The pitch. And Benedict walks. 